Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props. In today's video, we're going to look at one of the first builds in our Fortnite cosplay. We're going to be looking at this awesome Rust Lord helmet. And just how I put it together. <laughs> super excited about this build I have been really digging Fortnite my son plays it a lot and I've started playing it sometimes he even lets me I'm wondering why the camera's blurry let's see oh that's better and sometimes he even lets me play with him and his friends although I am horrible at it as you can see in the gameplay I just cannot seem to make this game work for me I don't know why but I love the character of Rust Lord maybe because it's so much similar to um, Star Lord, uh, I dig it, and I love this helmet, the design. Now, I am not up to par building helmets yet. I am working on it. So I actually had uh, my buddy, uh, the Broken Nerd, build this helmet for me, and it came out so amazing. The design of it, and of course, then we went ahead and painted and put it together, and then painted and did all the fi finishing and, and weathering. And I really love how this turned out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at all the steps. And then we are going to wrap up the video. So uh, guys, let's head over to the workbench. And I can show you how I put this together. Okay, for this build, I decided to actually split the helmet up to just, you know, cut down on the supports. There's going to be a crazy amount of support. So I split the sort of helmet part. We'll call this the helmet part. And then I also split the visor. And I did that using a mesh mixer. You can take a look at the video on the Batman tactical suit. I just, a little taggy thing should be popping up there. And so, yeah, we're just going to line these things up. And it's a fairly simple design. Uh, it's beautiful. And, and uh, the Broken Nerd did an amazing job. But uh, it, so there's not a lot of intricate pieces that we've got to line up. So I'm just sort of cleaning these edges up a little bit with some fine sandpaper here. And I'm doing both sides just to get rid of some little high spots and low spots that happen of course when you're printing and this uh, this is just going to make sure that the, also the glue is going to stick a little bit more and we're going to do everything to make sure that things stick together now of course it isn't going to be perfect because you know plastic moves it uh, shrinks it expands and uh, we are going to have to do some work so we're going to drop down some of our super glue and uh, this stuff is awesome uh, again all the stuff I use for this the paints uh, the glues, everything will be over at 3dprintedpropsgear.com. The green you'll see later, uh, I think it's a pretty good match. Um, and especially when it's weathered, it has a nice sort of color pop to it. So now it's just a question of getting the sort of crown piece, the, the head piece onto this uh, bottom piece and lining it up as best as possible. Now remember, it isn't going to be perfect. There's no way, again, plastic uh, contracts, it expands, it shifts. And I'm gonna, not gonna say that again because that is something I can find myself, uh, see myself saying a lot. So it's just, let's just know what happens. So we're just lining it up here and getting it as best I can and what we're going to do is I want to make sure that I'm especially getting up that that face plate area to be as tight as possible because that's that's visible uh, if you're looking straight out at somebody. So that uh, is what I want to use. And of course, super glue doesn't sit instantly, which is good. So it's giving me some time to move things around. And I realize that I really I'm not going to be able to get everything set perfectly the first place so I get one corner and I hit it with some of the accelerant and this stuff is awesome I love it uh, grab it because it saves so much time and now I'm just making my way around and seeing how things line up in the back and it's pretty close it's pretty close so just tagging that one side lets me go around and make sure that the other sides and the other areas are pretty close uh, again you know I'm not gonna repeat it <laughs> but that's about it that's getting as close as it's gonna get and I'm gonna line this area up because again this is a little seam so it's easy to line up that that ridge in the helmet and we're just gonna hit it with a bunch of the uh, accelerant I need to buy more of this stuff because it is uh, I, I think I use too much <laughs> but I really want it to stick 
Now, again, this super glue here hasn't set yet. It's still moving. I mean, I know this stuff says sets in 10 seconds. That is not true. And so I'm going to hit that side now that it's nice and lined up and as tight as it's going to get with the accelerant. And boom, the helmet is basically now together. I'm going to let it sit for a little while. And you can see there is a little lip there, but we are going to fix that later. And there we go. Nice and smooth, basically right there. And... We're gonna set that guy aside and work on gluing up the visor. Same thing, we use the glue, and I love this stuff because it's not too thin. I had to buy some cheap stuff into interim before my Amazon order comes in, and uh, it is horrible because uh, it's so thin, but this stuff is perfect. And uh, I can't remember the brand, but again, it's over on, uh, on the webpage. Now we're just gonna line this up, and again, this is critical because you know, if it's a little off on the sides, that's okay. I can sort of fix that. But I want these two holes lined up, you know, as well as I can get them. Because you see them. They're so visible. Uh, I was worried I wasn't going to be able to get this well enough. And uh, I think I did. And then, of course, I gave it a little bit of sanding. Now, the funny thing is the glue isn't sticking to the piece of plastic so much as it's sticking to my fingers. Uh, this was a, a messy job right here. And... Uh, at one point, yes, I did have the bottom part of the visor completely glued to my finger. And I'm going to hit it with a little bit of the accelerant now that it's pretty much close, just to make sure that one part is in. And my finger now is completely stuck, and I just broke it off the back of it. Now uh, we're going to do the other sides to make sure there is a gap. But again, we will fill that later on. Don't kill yourself trying to make it perfect. At this point, it's just not going to happen. Now, yes, you could print this all in one shot. Um, the visor, uh, you know, would have printed probably okay in one shot, but I wanted to give it a, a try splitting it and see what would happen. And the helmet, though, a little bit trickier printing all in one shot just because of that huge gap. So uh, I wanted to split it, but give it a try. You might be able to make it work, and uh, I just didn't really feel like it, and I figured I, I hadn't tried splitting a file like this, like a helmet, so I went ahead and did it. And I haven't shown these. These are the little uh, spikes and the caps for the visor. Okay, now uh, we have given it the first coat of primer to show all the hideousness of it, and you can see there's just some good gapping going on here. Uh, in the back, it's a little tighter. Also, that little, those sort of like the banding up top because the helmet was printed uh, with the base down. And yeah, you can see it's uh, a little messy. And here's where we go to work with my hideous Bondo jobs. <laughs> I'm getting better, but what are you going to do? And again, I'm just going through and filling in all the gaps and the voids uh, with Bondo. And this is going to make sure that it looks really nice and smooth. It gets rid of the lines. It gets rid of the, uh, of course, the glue lines. And I know it's horrible. If you're a good Bondo person and you're seeing that, it's terrible. And uh, lastly, before I sand everything down, I'm going to actually use the Bondo spot filler. Uh, it's for tinier cracks, uh, little tiny things, little voids. And I go a little too crazy with it, but what are you going to do? Okay, and there's the initial sanding, and I didn't show that, but I started with a 80, then to a 120, 220, and three something. Now, these things, uh, little side guys here, were not hollowed out, so I went ahead and dremeled them out so that I can fit my visor through. But they were a little uh, too short, so I printed out some cylinders and glued them onto the visor. Now, I am gonna use like a little pin to hold these in place, so I drilled a hole in through those things, those little cylinders, with a Dremel after I measured out the space in the inside where they needed to be. So you can see there's some holes in those things. They fit in, and I'll use a pin to hold them in place. So here's the pin I'm going to use, and I don't know the technical term for one of these things, but that's going to hold it in place. Now is the time where we get to do the fun thing, the final sort of sanding. And uh, I'm using a 2500 grit. It's probably super overkill, but you know it helps make things really smooth. So this is 2500 and I'm wet sanding this. All the pieces, parts, and I just use a little squeeze bottle uh, and you know wet sand everything down. 
And after you do a wet sand, always make sure to wash everything down in soap and water to get rid of that film. So here we go. Here's our initial sort of painting over at my dad's workshop. A lot of taping, a lot of painting as usual. And here we are. Now I'm going to actually use those rubber grommets and I'm going to put them on the inside of the cylinders so that when you lift the helmet visor up and down, it has something to sort of bite it in place and keep it. Um, because I figure over time you're going to, you know, the plastic will wear a little bit and you'll have some movement. So this way when we pop these in and then we use the rubber grommets, uh, which again, I think I've got at Lowe's, uh, but I'll put links to them they will uh, sort of give it some tension and make sure that the visor stays up or down. Okay, now it's time to glue down on a little pieces parts, the end caps, and of course something I've been waiting to put down because they look so cool, the spikes. Making sure it clears, which it, of course it does, and we're gluing all the spikes in place. Now you could use epoxy for this to really make sure they stick, but the super glue seems to be holding well. If one pops out, I'm actually probably going to go ahead and pop them all out and epoxy it. And there it is, the finished helmet. Now I need to take a look at the reference and I usually print something out so then I can see where things need to get painted, aged and whatnot. Now, of course, one of the big things is this red streak down the front, which was very nerve wracking because I'm like, I can't ruin this. But again, you can't ruin it. It's a it's a worn looking streak, just paint away. Uh, worst case scenario, you would have to sand just the visor down and, and start over. Uh, it happens. and uh, But I think it looks pretty good. I think it's it's red. <laughs> and it's a big streak on the visor. So, hey, why not? Okay, now on the side of the helmet, there's these sort of teal green sort of tick marks. Like you've uh, bumped off somebody. You know how many people you've taken out. And I think there's nine of them. Now, I have never taken out that many people in one round. If I can get one, I am very pleased. So this is really generous uh, on my account. If it was really my Rust Lord helmet and how many kills, there would be like one and a dot maybe so because I, I shot somebody else. But uh, these were fun to paint on. Again, you're just looking at your reference and matching it up. And here is, of course, my favorite part in the process, weathering. We make it all perfect and pretty, and then we do this to it, which is always, it just always cracks me up. And on that little paper plate that you can't really see, I've just got some, you know, uh, raw uh, burnt uh, sienna, some raw umber, some ochre, some black, some other kinds of brown, some orange, and I've just sort of mixed it into a slurry. And again, here, remember, this is sort of part, you know, science, part art part just you know close your eyes you want to put enough on leave it and then dab it off with a paper towel if you just wipe it all off very hard of course it's just all going to come off and if you're using like very watered down it is going to create a film so here it's kind of thick and i'm just going to paint it li literally all over initially because i want to get it the whole helmet to sort of look dingy and brown and dirty and then what I'll do is I'll actually go in and affect just the areas that would get the most dirt so what are those cracks crevices like let's say there's going to be dirt obviously inside the sort of areas where those little gullies are there's going to be dirt closer you know to the uh, spikes coming out so because you know dirt would catch in there but initially, I'm just browning up the whole helmet. I can't remember who said it, but uh, there's a podcast I listen to called, um, oh my goodness, what is it called? Phil uh, Epolito or whatever his name is? I don't know. But it's a, it's a monster podcast about movie making and, and special effects. And uh, they had a guy on who is an expert in weathering, and he calls it browning it up. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I'm browning it up. And it is just that I'm, I'm dabbing some off, I'm putting some on and I always end up taking up too much off. So just remember, you know, leave some stuff on there. Uh, the more of the solid paint you use, uh, sometimes the better towards the end, because then that really leaves a mark and will stick there. Like the watery stuff like here, see, I'm just putting on, I'm dabbing it and that stuff I'm going to dab really, really lightly with a paper towel so that it stays because if i wipe it it's going to come right off and again i'm putting it in the cracks and the crevices where you know dirt would form
Then I'm coming in with a second pop of color, and this is an orange color, sort of like a, and I'm mixing it in with brown, so it's not too orange. Of course, of course, this is Rust Lord, and I want to get that orange color in, and I'm going to put it, you know, here and there along the rims, uh, where you know things might start rusting, and then of course, next thing we'll do is we will tackle the visor because that needs to get aged as well. And for that, I'm going to, of course, get the sides because dirt and grime would hang out in there and just work and smudge this silver, which is funny because I worked so hard to get it so nice and gritty and sh or shiny. And now I'm making it look all grungy. And that silver, you might look at it and say it's got a little bit of a tooth to it. It does. It's actually, if I remember correctly, um, alloy paint. Uh, uh, spray paint for cars. I got it in an automotive place. Again, the link will be in the description where you can get this stuff. And it has like a, a grit to it, like a tooth to it that really kind of makes it look um, like it's really been machined and not sort of like glossy, glossy. And again, wiping things on and trying not to wipe them off too much because I always tend to do that and it takes me twice as long to do a helmet. And there it is. That is a fully weathered Star-Lord helmet. Now it's just a question of letting it dry. And I decided, you know, since he's out there in the wilderness, we don't want glares. I did go ahead and hit all of the helmet with a matte clear coat. Well, all right. That's what we did. That's how we put it together. Simple, printed this thing up, multiple parts. I wanted to give that a try. I don't see any of the seam lines. I'm very happy with it the weathering, the painting, and yes, it is not the easiest to see through, but I think on the con floor, it will be fine. Now, I am having uh, the Broken Nerd do some updates on it, and uh, as you saw in the video, to work on keeping the visor in there, and I think it's going to be working out, well, it's working out just fine, the little add-ons that I made, so once he puts that into the print, it'll be fantastic. So, here's the good news. If you are looking for this this STL file, this 3D file, if you want to start on this way, you can head over to my Patreon page. So just go over to Patreon and type in 3D printed parts or go to the description below, click on head over, and I'll have uh, this STL. And I'm going to be putting up some other STLs I've been working on, some other 3D files that you can get at for uh, just becoming a Patreon. And it's really cheap. It's a, a buck for uh, that Patreon status. And really excited about that. Also, if you're looking for any of the things I used for this build, uh, paints, glues, the color scheme, what, so, what sort of paints I used, what Rust-Oleum and, and or uh, Velspar paints or spray paints I used, you can head over to, again, or just go to the description below, you can head over to 3dprintedpropsgear.com. That's, again, in the description. And, again, that's a uh, those are affiliate links. So anytime you click on those and buy from those, it super helps out the channel. It lets me buy filament and whatnot. And lastly, speaking of filament, these were all printed with ZL Tech uh, filament. And I love this stuff. I have been buying some inexpensive filament lately and just not being happy with it. It's not wound properly, it's, uh, so it's jamming. Uh, this stuff I have printed, as you'll see in the next few videos, so much stuff with this lately. And cool thing is, if you click on the link below, there's a coupon code and you'll get a nice percentage off your uh, filament. And we'll be having a review on this filament at some point uh, soon. I'm just printing, you know, a bunch through it. I've actually just printed 10 rolls through this, uh, of this stuff. So I will be doing a review on it pretty soon. So again, hope you love the helmet. If you're interested in the helmet, uh, take a look at uh, the Patreon page to grab your file. And yeah. I'm going to be putting together a full Rust Lord cosplay. Super excited about it. I want to thank you guys for watching and uh, have a great day.